हेलो सिग्मास to find the time period of a simple pendulum or of a spring mass system is for the kids today we are going to find the time period of this a very interesting object which you can see on your screen which is known as the teacher toy this teacher toy consists of a two spherical bodies which have a mass of m and these spherical bodies are connected to this thing known as the peg right which let's say has a mass of capital m and a length of capital l through the two rods or the arms of the teacher toy which let us say has a length of uh, small l and uh, let us say that uh, these rods have a mass of m prime now i'm going to construct this teacher toy in such a manner that uh, i'm going to assume or i am going to construct the teacher toy in such a manner that a small m is going to be very much greater than capital m or m prime that is i am going to make the spherical body's mass very much greater than the mass of the rod or the mass of the peg and then i am going to set this peg of the teacher toy into oscillations now let us say that this uh, peg or in fact the axis of the peg you can easily see that this peg is nothing but a nail something like a nail or a, a pin or a needle right and it will have axis it will be symmetrical about the axis so let us say that this uh, arm of the teacher toy makes an angle alpha with the axis of the peg Similarly, the sum also makes an angle alpha with the axis of the peg. And once uh, we have constructed such a teacher toy, we are ready to set it into oscillations. So what I'm going to do is displace the peg of this teacher toy by an angle theta, and then leave it. Right? I'm going to leave it, and then it is going to start oscillating, and then. what we need to do is find the time period of oscillations of the teacher toy if i displace the teacher toy by let us say some angle theta then it is going to look like this so here i have displaced the teacher toy by an angle theta right this angle theta is the angle which the axis of the peg is the making with the wood right there is the arms are again making an angle alpha with the axis of the peg these the uh, spherical bodies have a mass of a small m and these the rods have a length of l i'm not going to write the masses of the uh, peg or the masses of the rods because as i've already told you that they are very much less compared to the mass of the spherical body you know that to find the time period we what we need to first find are the kinetic and potential energies of this teacher toy and we already know how to do that from my previous video where whose link if you have not watched it i'm going to put it in the description or in the comments or you can find it in the recommended video section but we already know that if we know the kinetic energies and the potential energy of these uh, teacher toy then we can easily find its angular frequency and hence from the angular frequency we can easily find its time period so let us uh, quickly find the uh, potential and kinetic energies of the spherical bodies yes i'm going to just find the potential energy of the spherical bodies and also only the kinetic energies of the spherical bodies because again i had made that assumption right where the mass of uh, that uh, peg and the mass of the rod is very much smaller than the mass of the spherical bodies and that means that uh, since the kinetic energy and the potential energy depends upon the mass of uh, these rods pegs and spherical bodies i can neglect the kinetic energy and potential energy of the rods and that of the peg because it is just going to be the gravitational potential energy which depends upon the mass so if mass can be neglected that means both gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy of the peg and the rods can also be neglected and that means the energy contribution to the 
Teacher toy is solely going to be due to the two spherical bodies. To find the potential energy of the spherical body, what I am going to do is set a reference point, right? That is what we do if we want to find the potential energy. We set a reference point where the potential energy of the system is assumed to be zero. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to assume the potential energy over here. This is the pivot of the theta toy, right? I'm going to assume that the potential energy at the pivot is equal to zero. That means that I'm going to measure all lengths from this surface, right? I'm going to measure all lengths from that surface where the potential energy is zero. And hence, if I want to know the potential energy of this mass M, what I need to find is this length, the length of that mass from the pivot, right? I'm, I need to find that. Okay, so let us quickly uh, get started with finding that this was the pivot where the potential energy is zero, okay? So to find that length, what I am going to do first is find this length and then subtract this length from that one to get the length that we want. This is going to be nothing else but L cos theta, right? Because uh, as I've told you, the length of the peg is capital L. And hence, if it is inclined at some angle theta, that means the vertical component of that length is going to be simply L cos theta, okay? And what is going to be this one? To find this length, what I have, you have to notice, to find that length, what you have to notice is this Z. Right, you have to notice that as Z. If this angle is theta, that means this angle over here is also theta. And if this entire angle is alpha, as you can see here, that means that this angle obviously is going to be alpha minus theta. Let me draw it with another color. So this length is going to be alpha minus theta. And if that length is or that angle is alpha minus theta, okay, that angle is alpha minus theta, that means this thing over here is uh, L cos alpha minus theta, right? Because it is, what we have done is taken the component of this length L, right? This rod has a length L. And what we have done is taken its component in the vertical direction. And that would uh, just be L cos alpha minus theta because this angle is alpha minus theta as we just found out. This angle is theta and this entire angle is alpha. So that angle is obviously equal to alpha minus theta. And if this, that entire length is equal to L cos alpha minus theta, that means we have found this length which is equal to L cos alpha minus theta minus L cos theta. And if we know that length of uh, the mass M or that distance of this mass M from the pivot, the vertical distance from the pivot, then we know that its potential energy is going to be mg into L cos alpha minus theta minus L cos theta. Okay, so that was the potential energy of that body. And next, what we are going to do is find out the potential energy of this spherical body, right? which again depends upon the distance of that mass from the pivot or the vertical distance of that mass from the pivot. Okay, so before we can find that, let me quickly clear this up. Okay, so this length we already know is the L cos the theta. What is going to be the vertical component of this L, right? What is going to be the vertical component of that L, okay? A vertical component, I mean uh, this small tiny length over here, right? That is exactly what the vertical component of L is going to be. So what is that? This angle over here is theta. And if that angle, it's not the whole angle, it's just this. And if that angle is theta, that would imply that the angle which this length L, which this uh, rod of length L is making with the vertical, right, this entire angle over here that I'm drawing in purple is obviously equal to alpha plus theta. Let me draw it elsewhere and explain it to you. So I have something like this. Since uh, this angle is uh, alpha and this angle is theta, 
this entire length over or the entire angle over there is obviously equal to alpha plus theta, right? That is what I have done there. This angle is theta again because of uh, the properties of angles. You can see that there is a z which is formed there. So if that angle is theta, then this angle is also theta. So that is the properties of angles. And hence, what this vertical component of L is going to be, this one over here, is it is going to be equal to L cos alpha plus theta. And if that is L cos alpha plus theta, then this length right over here is obviously equal to L cos theta minus L cos alpha plus theta, right? It is going to be equal to this entire length, right? This one minus this length is going to be this length, which is the same as this one, right? There's the length of that mass from the pivot, the vertical length or the vertical distance of the, that mass from the pivot, right? So now if we know the distance of the mass from the pivot, we can easily find out its potential energy. Its potential energy is simply going to be equal to mg into L cos theta minus L cos alpha plus theta. Okay, so now since we know the potential energies of both the masses, we are ready to find the total potential energy of these two theta toy. Okay, so what is going to be the total potential energy of the theta toy? It is just going to be equal to mg L cos theta minus L cos alpha plus theta. Now, another convention that I'm going to assume is that I'm going to say that the direction upwards is positive. That is all directions taken upwards from the pivot is positive. Whereas all directions taken downwards from the pivot, I'm going to say are negative. And that would imply that I will be left with uh, U of theta equal to mg L cos theta minus uh, L cos alpha plus theta, which is this term minus mg l cos uh, alpha minus theta minus l cos theta because as i said that i'm going to assume all distances uh, taken in the downward direction from the pivot as negative so uh, since i have that what i'm going to do is now apply the uh, formula of trigonometry for uh, cos of uh, alpha plus theta and cos of alpha minus theta uh, if I do that, I will be left with uh, mg L cos theta minus uh, L, what is cos of alpha plus theta? Cos of alpha plus theta is cos alpha cos theta minus sine alpha sine theta. And uh, what is uh, L cos uh, alpha minus theta, right? I will get another plus L cos theta over here. This minus and minus will become plus. And I will get minus L into cos alpha, right? I'm expanding this cos alpha minus theta. So I will be left with uh, cos alpha cos theta plus sine alpha sine theta. So I will get that. And now what I can do is multiply this uh, minus L's uh, inside. And if I do that, what I will be left after canceling out the terms, you can see that uh, yeah, I will be left with minus L cos alpha cos theta and a plus L sine alpha sine theta. Whereas over here, I will be left with minus L cos alpha cos theta and a minus L sine alpha sine theta if I open up the brackets. So this term and this term is going to get cancelled. And then I will be left with uh, mg into, okay, these terms appear twice. That means I will have uh, two times of those uh, terms. And hence, uh, two I can take common. So I will be left with 2mg into L minus L cos alpha. Again, I can take cos theta common. As you can see, cos theta is uh, common there. So I will take cos theta common here. And once I have done that, what I want you to notice is that this term over here is a constant, which I am going to set equal to minus a. I'm just going to call it equal to negative of a. Now you might ask if I just wanted a name for a constant, why did I use the negative sign? I could just call it a, right? Well, you are soon going to find out why I did that, okay? So what I will be left with is minus a cos theta. And then I'm going to 
Taylor expand costly time going to write the series expansion Taylor series expansion of cos theta and that is nothing but minus a into 1 minus theta squared by 2 plus some higher order terms and then I can multiply the minus a inside and I'm going to neglect the terms beyond the quadratic terms like I have done in my previous video and in fact uh, if you do not know what tail expansion is or how can we use it here or why are we using it here then I will leave the link to the video on my tail expansion or the video in which I have taught tail expansion in the description or uh, in the comments or you can find it in the recommended videos section right so I'm going to neglect the high order terms simply because it is a simple uh, harmonic oscillation and you know that we just give a very small displacement to a simple harmonic oscillator so I will be left with minus a plus a theta squared divided by two. This is the reason I had set that term equal to minus a so that I can get a positive term over here right I wanted the positive term there so I said okay let's set it equal to minus a. So this is exactly the potential energy of the teacher toy and next thing that we need to find is the kinetic energy of the teacher toy if you want to find out its time period. To find the kinetic energy uh, what I am going to do is uh, say that this distance of the mass from the pivot is equal to s. I am just going to say that where s is, as you can easily see is equal to under root of uh, l squared minus l squared and uh, as you can easily see this is constant and that is the reason why I am just calling it s. I am do not want to write l square minus l squared again and again so I am just going to give that a name I am going to call it s and since I know that uh, finding kinetic energy is a very very easy job compared to our uh, potential energy potential energy was a big headache as we just saw well, kinetic energy is simply going to be equal to half m or in fact 2m because there are two masses and both are at a distance of s right from the pivot and since I am measuring all distances from the pivot so I am just going to get s squared theta dot squared right because s into theta dot is equal to v so I have not done anything but that is just uh, and half mv squared but for both the masses so 2 times half mv squared so that is the kinetic energy and uh, hence what I can write it as is equal to half b into theta dot squared and uh, you already know why I am writing, writing it as the a or I am writing it as b simply because I want to find the time period because you know that the angular frequency is equal to nothing but under root of a by b and we already know what a is right if minus of a is equal to 2 mg capital L minus L cos alpha that means a is equal to 2 mg into L cos alpha minus capital L I just uh, replace the terms right if I multiply by a minus sign divided by b as you can see is equal to 2m s so 2m will get cancelled over here and hence what we were set to find is finally here the angular frequency of uh, the teacher toy is equal to g l cos uh, alpha minus capital L divided by s squared and since we have found the angular frequency we can easily find the time period by using 2 pi divided by the angular frequency right so this over here is exactly what we were set to find we wanted to find the angular frequency and hence the time period of the theta toy now next what we are going to do is uh, find the condition for which theta toy is going to be stable we cannot simply construct the theta toy in any manner we want we have to construct it in such a manner that we get the simple harmonic oscillations otherwise if we do not fulfill that condition then the theta 
toy is just going to topple over. And how do we exactly analyze the stability of any simple harmonic oscillator is what I'm going to show you now using the example of the treated toy. Now, one thing that I want you to notice is that in my previous video, I told you that since this point for a simple harmonic oscillator was a minimum, hence uh, the first derivative of the function, uh, we had just set it to zero because that was a condition for the minimum. But do not forget that that is not only the condition for the minimum, but it is also condition for the maximum. For the maxima 2, the first derivative is 0. So how are you so sure that uh, the simple harmonic oscillator, in our case it is the teacher toy, is going to give us the condition for the minima and not the maxima. So we just fulfill this one. We never use the condition which separates the minima from the maximum. Yes, you guessed it right. We are going to use the property from elementary calculus, which is used to differentiate a maximum from minimum. That is, we are going to find the second space derivative of uh, the potential energy. The second order space derivative of the potential energy is what we are going to find. And you know that if the uh, second order space derivative is positive, we have a uh, minimum and hence this is going to be stable. Because over here you can see that if you apply a positive force, since force, you know the relationship between force and uh, potential energy, it is equal to minus uh, del u upon del x, right? Or minus del u upon del theta. In this case, it is the gradient of the potential energy. So we know the condition for, uh, or the relation, we know the relation between the force and the potential energy. It is the force is the gradient of uh, the potential energy. And over here, you can see that if I apply some positive force, right, on uh, a mass, then it is just going to keep traveling in that direction. It won't return to the equilibrium. You can easily see that because the kinetic energy curve is going to be like this. So it will, if kinetic energy has no bound, it keeps on increasing, right? So it is just going to keep traveling. That's a Newton's uh, force law. And that implies for simple harmonic oscillations, obviously we need this minima. We, I have already told you that that minima is what is required for simple harmonic oscillations, okay? And hence for stable oscillations, what we need, yeah, the condition that we need is that the d square u upon t theta square has to be greater than zero. If it is uh, if d square u upon d theta square is less than or equal to zero, then this is uh, not stable or neutral, right? Not stable, or if it is zero, then it is called neutral. But we are not interested in these cases. We need a simple harmonic oscillations, and hence we are only interested in this case. We want the second derivative to be greater than zero. Okay, so since uh, we have to satisfy that condition, let us quickly set the second derivative of the potential energy of the teacher toy equal to zero. What was the potential energy? Yes, the potential energy was uh, minus a cos theta. So let me quickly write it down. The potential energy uh, was equal to minus a cos theta. That implies du upon uh, t theta is equal to a sine theta and uh, d square u upon t theta is equal to a cos theta. Right. And what exactly is a? A is, where is it? Yes, a over here. We have used a over here. It is 2mg L cos alpha minus capital L. So a is equal to 2mg into L cos alpha minus capital L. That has to be with the cos theta. Now, the cos theta, we are evaluating it at the minima. That means at the minima, obviously, theta equal to zero, right? This minima for the theta toy corresponds to theta equal to zero about the origin. That is uh, the equilibrium position. What is the equilibrium position for the theta toy? This, this is exactly the equilibrium position. Again, if you do not know what equilibrium position is, check out my previous video. So this is the equilibrium position and you can see that for the equilibrium position, theta is equal to zero. So we need to evaluate the second derivative at the equilibrium position, which is obvious. This is what we did last time with the first derivative. 
Here too, we need to find the first derivative at the equilibrium position. So at the equilibrium position, that is at theta equal to zero. Let's so write it here. D square u upon d theta at theta equal to zero. If we set theta equal to zero over here, cos of zero is the just cos of zero is one. So if we just set uh, theta equal to zero there, we get cos of zero, which is one. And that is uh, just going to leave me with a, which is this. Okay, so this has to be greater than zero if I want a stable equilibrium. And that simply implies that L cos alpha has to be greater than capital L. This is the condition that we need to satisfy if we want to make a teacher toy. While constructing the teacher toy, we need to make sure that small l cos alpha is greater than capital L. That is, these uh, masses over here, right, these masses, small m, should hang up below the pivot, right? So they cannot be above the pivot. I cannot, for example, make a teacher toy which uh, looks something like this. Let me draw it over here. Okay, so I cannot uh, construct a teacher toy which looks like this. This also looks a bit funny, <laughs> right? So I cannot uh, construct a teacher toy which looks like that because L cos uh, alpha is uh, less than L over here. So the L cos alpha. Right. If this is alpha, then you can, and this is L, then you can see that L cos alpha is less than L. So this will be very unstable. You cannot uh, create a, or you cannot manufacture a teacher toy that looks like that. That would just not work. The teacher toy, these masses over here should actually hang below the pivot, right? So the masses should be hanging below the pivot. This is the pivot and the ha masses should hang below the pivot. Only then, the teacher toy is going to be stable. Also, another thing that you can notice is that uh, if uh, L cos alpha minus L is uh, greater than zero, that means uh, the omega is positive, right? This is positive, right? If L cos alpha minus L is zero, then omega is also zero. And if it is negative, then omega is uh, imaginary. Let me represent it like this, imaginary. So it is imaginary, okay? So L cos alpha minus L just cannot be less than zero. That would not give a proper teacher toy because it will have some kind of uh, infinite time period, right? If omega is zero, this will be infinite, right? Or it will be imaginary. So that we just don't want that. So as you can see from here, L cos alpha minus L is greater than zero is also required if we want proper angular frequencies and proper time period. So that's it. That was all about this very interesting toy, right? Whose physics is very much more complicated than uh, the toy. The toy looks very pretty much simple, but the physics behind it is so very rich that I just couldn't avoid making a video on this concept. I will see you in another video with another such interesting concept. If you like this one, do not forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching.